I also feel like, and the thing that kind of trickles down into literature as well, which is like where you know what I know things about, is that sometimes a lot of um, poetry, for example, a lot of students want to read it, but it's fallen out of print, and nobody has republished it. So they can't read it. So it's not even a lack of interest. It's a lack of access to it. So for example, like I grew up with a lot of Sohail Rana songs and singing them in singing class. And a lot of them, I can't find them on YouTube. And I suppose that's the sort of thing where, you know, Peshkash could help me find my childhood classic. I mean, very similar to how Sare music is working, I feel like yeah. it's important to know that in terms of preservation and archiving, especially with music, what's happened in the past with, you know, major companies that have held music or, you know, even government organizations mm. that have worked mm. towards music, the archive may have existed, but it's, if your archive is not accessible, even if just to a small number of people, yes. you know, to, to anybody, then what's the point? Because distribution is such a major part mm -hmm. of preservation, is for it to be heard, not just for it to be kind of digitized and then locked away in hard drives that no one has yeah. access to. Uh, because as we've mentioned, the demand is absolutely there. And I think classical music and traditional music just has a bad PR game in that it, you know, it's been associated with an older lot, but it's not true. Every Everyone, yeah. everyone has their own preferences of genres, and I feel like everyone deserves to have access to pretty much all kinds of Pakistani music that has existed. Yeah.